know the clustering purpose is divide a given set of objects into subgroups uh, based on similarity. Uh, one of the most popular algorithms to clustering is fuzzy image, in which a data set is grouped into n cluster with every data belonging to every uh, to every cluster to a certain degree. Uh, fuzzy means cannot guarantee a unique clustering result because the initial centroids are chosen at random. Uh, this yields a higher number of iteration and the clustering result unstable. So many investigations try to find the best way to, to initialize these centroids. So in this context, we compare different metals to initialize process image algorithm to improve the, the, the data clustering to, uh, or the image segmentation. Uh, as I mentioned before, the fossil means uh, uh, algorithm assigns each pixel to the nearest cluster, a membership degree between zero and one, and the objective function is based on the sum of the square distance. And to be optimal, it is necessary minim minimized by two steps. First, uh, we need to to find the the update equations. First, the, the degree of membership are optimized by setting the parameters of the groups. And then the prototypes of the groups are optimized by setting the degrees of the membership. Uh, this equation resulting from the two iterative steps form the FOSIC means algorithm. Uh, seeding uh, is a important method for cluster initialization, which general, generally is a procedure to select seeds from a data set. It's been as the initial center of a cluster. So in this paper, uh, four techniques were studied: Kamin plus plus cluster sample and uniform random seeding. The uh, uniform seeding is a technique that selects the number of centers uniformly at random, and is the usual way in which centers are initialized initialized in the first means. Here is the the algorithm. It's very simple. And the next is sample seeding. Uh, this, this selects a number of points from the data set at random, which are the initial centroids. Uh, the algorithm is very simple. We have the data and the number of the centers, like input and the output with a set of centers. See, uh, we only need to select each center randomly from the data. Uh, cluster seeding uh, performs a preliminary cluster phase, phase in a random 10% 10, 10, 10 subsample of the data. Uh, this preliminary phase, phase initializes itself using sample seeding. And when the number of the points in the 10% random subsample is less than the number of the centers, uh, then selects randomly the number of centers of the data set. The, angle, the algorithm is very simple, and it's over here. And the last one is Kamin, uh, Kamin's plus plus. Uh, is one of the most used strategies for seeding that distribute the initial centers across the space covered by data set elements. Uh, we first choose a, a initial center from the point, uh, random, and then compute the square distance um, between all points and select the next the next random center with a probability. Uh, the this this for for initialization methods was test was tested in 300 images selected for five different databases and just to depict uh, in the figure in the figure some of the images are uh, of this database are shown in which we put the name of the image and then the name of the image and the number of regions established to segment each image is suggested uh, to parameter C. Uh, the considered metric to measure the, the quality of the clustering uh, were, were sum of the square error. Uh, this is usually using to validate the initialization methods, uh, the partition coefficient, to measure the amount of overlapping between cluster and adjusted, adjusted rat index uh, to calculate a similarity measure between two clustering. 
And on the other hand, the metrics to measure the, the, the quality of the image segmentation were accuracy to measure the, the quality of the clustering, the dissimilar coefficient uh, to quantify the overlap between segmentation results and the ground truth, and intersection of a union um, to show if the classes are, are well classified. And uh, well, one of the experiments to determine uh, which of the four methods has the, the better performance is compare the number of iteration and the runtime of each one. Uh, the, the <laughs> table one shows the execution average performance of the four uh, initialization methods. So cluster uh, seeding has the shower execution performance with less uh, number of iteration, 11. Uh, this is be because uh, it performs a clustery phase based on a subsample of 10% of, of the data. Uh, that is, it reduced the image to 10% to find the, the initial cent centroids, while the other methods use the original image. In second place is Camin++ plus plus, uh, with, with 14 iteration, approximately 0 0.09 second is lower than, than cluster, than, than cluster seeding. Uh, in the next figure, we observe the evolution of the four methods based, based on the number of iteration. The, the, minimiza the minimization of the quadratic error was calculated through, through its objective function, and the result was plotted in terms of the number of iteration for only one, one sample image. Uh, in order to stand, standardize the graph, the iteration were plotted uh, from zero to 20. Uh, the, the, it is important to emphasize that uniform seeding uh, re requires more than 20 iteration to converge, specifically 39, while can means only need four iteration. Uh, as can be seen in the figure, apparently there is no change, uh, there is no significant change in the, in the quantization of the objective function from the, the A iteration in this. Uh, with this in mind, it is possible that this iteration allowed to improve fine details in, in the segmentation results. Uh, finally, the average value of each metric were considered to measure the, the cluster quality is presented in this table. Uh, these quantitative results su suggest that k uh, has the best performance in terms of the two of the metric considered. Uh, the superiority is due to the fact that this technique selects the, the initial centers by means of a probability function and the others do so uh, random or with subsamples. Uh, here is presented the quantitative average performance of the experiments. Uh, this result shows that, that Kia means uh, plus plot has better results uh, in two of the metric considered uh, due to the selection of the initial uh, centroid, which unlike the other method, use a probability function and it's not random. Uh, to visualize these results, uh, this figure shows the, beh the behavior of, of this metric in, in only 12 test images. And due, due to space limitation, we only show uh, the quantitative result for three sample images segmented through positive means using the four initialization methods. Um, Uniform sample cluster, it came in plus plus. Uh, in this figure, all of the metal segmented the image into the specified cluster that were two. And, uh, but in this figure, uh, two metals, uniform and sample, uh, have trouble assigning some ba background pixels. And with this example, 
we can confirm the coming plus plus successfully segment the image in, in the cluster determined by the parameter C. In this case, uh, we're three. And will the other method have troubles uh, assigning some pixels to the correct cluster? And this corroborate by comparing it with the ground truth. And in addition to reversing the, the quantitative result presented uh, uh, previously. Okay, uh, to conclude, in this paper, a comparison of different initialization methods was made to improve the sensitivity of positive algorithm when choosing the initial cluster center, as they are in, important on the segmentation the, uh, uh, quality. <laughs> the experimental result concludes that the coming plus plus initialization method produces a better initialization condition for positive means algorithm. And then sample and uniform initialization methods by successfully reducing the execution time and producing more homogeneous re regions in the segmentation result. Uh, this is reported with the quantitative result, demonstrated that Kamin plus plus has a superior result in the considered metrics. And as a future work, uh, we intend to incorporate other features such as texture. Uh, to improve this segmentation. In addition, testing the, the initialization method in different color spaces, even extended it to institutionistic or hesitant position theory. Uh, here's as the reference. And th thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there any questions, please? Let me know, let us know. Not many. It's very important, the feedback. Birna. Yes. Um, I can see an homogeneous or general um, behavior of superiority. Uh, is it right? Uh, I don't understand. Uh, it, so it's what? not always better than the other algorithms. They, they come in plus plus? In, in all the context. It, I mean, in the in the graphs, the performance, uh, I can see a global performance which in which your algorithm is better than other in, in this a general uh, yes in a general um, approach. Is it right or or I'm not um, seeing the the main contribution? In the graphs, in the graph, of course. In this one? Uh -huh, yes, for example. Uh, well, wait, they, they are similar. In, it's, in, it's in, the... uh, okay. In this, in this, uh, Kamin plus plus um, has a better result. He Kamin uh, converts in less iteration than the others. So okay. He's, he's, he's more, he's, it's more. Uh, it's better. Okay. It's it's better. Uh -huh. and, and, in, and in the in the segmentation in the segmentation there's no uh, uh, um, uh, significant change, but uh, in all the the image that that we tested uh, have a, a a better result. Uh, I mean. Uh, uh, Coming plus plus segmented all the image into the the specified uh, regions, like, okay. like in this one uh, right here and this. The other metals here, the other the other metals had trouble to to segment the 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 or assign the, the assign the the pixels into the correct and the uh, right. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, did you? Have you considered some variants of the k-means? 
because k-means have uh, several variants, not only k-means, k-means, no? Okay, k-means, uh, the, the clustering algorithm, uh, yes, but we, here we are talking about uh, initialization methods that use uh, a probability to find the, the, the center of the group. Uh-huh, okay, uh-huh. Okay, that's the, the, the difference. Okay, you have used this, this variant. Uh-huh. Okay, very good. Um, I think there are no more questions. Oh, uh, we are waiting from Facebook or YouTube. Let me, let me check. No, not in social network. YouTube, uh, Facebook. No? Well, I have a question. Okay. Yes. Um, there is a um, manner to, to if Camin needs a, a number to initially say, then you need to know how many uh, objects do you are searching in the image, that, no? Then there is a, a, me a method to, to avoid that. To avoid? To, to select the number of select the number of, yes uh, -huh. uh well here uh, uh the we need to to tell the the algorithm or the number of centers is not a uh, uh, adaptative oh, okay okay thank you well Thank you, Birna. I will share my screen to display your diploma. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very interesting and good results. Thank you very much. The Mexican Society for Artificial Intelligence, MIA, and the Universidad Panamericana award this certificate to Birna Viridiana. Bella Rincón, Celia Ramos Palencia, and Dante Mujica Vargas for presentation of the paper entitled Comparison Methods for Fuzzy C Means Initialization Applied to Image Segmentation at the 19th Mexican International Conference of Artificial Intelligence, MICAI 2020, Mexico City, Mexico. Congratulations, Virna. Thank you very much. Now we continue with the next presentation entitled SPEDU, a toolbox for processing digitalized historical documents from Fabio Rocha and Guillermo Gutierrez. Come on, Guillermo. You're Hello. welcome. Hello. Hello, how are you? My name is Guillermo Rodriguez, sorry. Guillermo not Rodriguez. Not oh. Gutierrez. Excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you are, you are right, okay. Well, uh, my name is Guillermo Rodriguez. I'm from Argentina, from Ististan Research Institute. And the first author is Fabio Gomez Rocha from uh, Universidad Tiradentes, from Sergipe, Brazil. Uh, I'm going to present this, first, this article entitled SP Edu, a toolbox for processing digitized historical documents. Well, I'm going to outline the presentation. First, I'm going to introduce our problem. Then we are going to state the problem. I will describe the most important or most relevant related work. Then I will present our approach and consequently the experimental results. And finally, I will present the conclusions and future lines of work. Well, as you know, historical educational documentary resources have gained considerable attention in educational context. Also, a large part of documents is not digitized, making research difficult. As a consequence, there is a need for transcription, digitization, and cataloging sources of information for the analysis of large volume of data. The processing of data from Gazette is a task with a high degree of difficulty since they are printed on low quality paper, which tends to change color over time. Such changes generate noise. 
Since historical documents are complex sources after the preprocessing, it is necessary to analyze the page layout. Layout analysis and to recognize the distinction, distinction between textual ration and those that are not, then making possible to strike the text. So, we are going to state our problem. Print historical information sources represent a complex challenge for information extraction. This is because these sources contain several page layouts with multiple articles, in which they are designed to allow people to define their reading order. Paragraph and image are unpredictably distributed over several pages, making the extraction of data from printed information source a daunting task. This is particularly what happened with Gazette, this is official information for a government. And a brief review of the, uh, of the state of the art, we said that, or we, can, we could see that, for example, Reshet Waria and Magaku state that in digital age, the conversion of print documents to electronic form has become a necessity for the availability of information. Typically, to extract data through optical character recognition, in this context, Vasilopoulos and Cavaliera to state that it's necessary to employ methods that combine document lay layout analysis with text detection. So, in this context, we present SP Edu, a toolbox for processing digitized historical documents. And you can see in the image, the official gazette of the, the um, state of Sergipe is one state in the northeast of Brazil. And this uh, device is a, a scanner, a mini scanner to uh, just scan each page of this information source. To deal with layout analysis, we present this tool, a tool to digitize historical sources for information in Portuguese. The workflow of SP Edu is divided into three, three steps. The tool acquires images from an information source, like you see in the black device. The tool preprocesses the images and extracts features from them. And then classification models are trained to determine whether an image is text or not. This is our workflow. Fence. Firstly, we have the image acquisition. Then the image is converted. Then the image is vinarized, delayed again. So after that is the process of kernel definition. Then the contour detection. After that, some filters are applied. Then the detection of H is, that is uh, conducted. And then the structure of characteristic or attribute or features are perform in order to build classification models. So what, uh, what kind of feature are extracted to, to detect outlines? First is the proportion. The proportion is the ratio between the width of, and height of an image. The extension is another feature. feature. This, uh, that means the area of the shape divided by the bounding box area of the object. The compass hole is another feature that is used to check if the curve for convexity defects and correct it. Solidity is the division of the contour area by the area of the compass hole. And finally, the area of object is the total of point of an object. These features are extracted and then are prepared in order to build a classification mode. So, in this context, we formulated the following new hypothesis. The first hypothesis is the object that we detect is an image. The second hypothesis is the object detected is a text. And the third hypothesis and the last that is the object is a noise. Well, well, they are going to present our case study to assess our tool. We use the Gazette. Diario Oficial do Estado do Sergipe, published in Brazil, which has more than 10 years of paper edition. This has set contemplates the political history of the region, since all governmental acts must be published in it. Examples are, for, for example, the opening of the schools and possession of government secretaries, which can subsidize researches, researches in the field of education. 
will run different classification algorithms to corroborate the aforementioned hypothesis. The classification algorithms used were J48 is a um, three algorithm, logistic regression, multi ray perceptron MLB, NAY base, random forest, and random tree. And the validation technique or the evaluation technique was tenfold cross validation. So after conducting the algorithms, we take into account the accuracy and then um, the accuracy in, on average, okay, after the 10 uh, cross fold validation. So we can say that NAY base got 80%, 85% of accuracy, logistic regression 92%, multi lay perceptor, perceptron 93%. A percentage of accuracy, J48, 93 again, random forest, 95, and random tree, 94%. So random forest outperformed the remaining algorithms. And you can say in this, uh, in the box plot uh, image, we can see the superior performance of random forest algorithm in this, in this classification task. So, at conclusion, we have presented SP Edu, a tool to digitize historical sources of information. We saw that random forest outperformed the remaining algorithm in the task of classification of tests and non-tests, with an average accuracy of 95%. Random forest show a little discrepancy in the results, with few errors, proving to be a more efficient option compared to the other algorithms. We also demonstrated that our approach surpasses state-of-the-art comparable approaches. As future work, we are planning to evaluate our tool with more historical sources of information. Furthermore, we intend to incorporate historical sources in English. And finally, we would like to explore deep learning algorithms to improve the classification task. Thank you very much for your attendance. And I let you with the contact of Fabio Gomez Rocha, the first author that is the person who, is, who was very involved in the development of the tool. And you have the email contact. So uh, the, I hope to answer the question that you have. But in case of doubt, don't hesitate to write to Fabio Gomez Rocha. Thank you, Guillermo Rodriguez. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, uh, I think it's very interesting. Uh, in, yes, I think I, that uh, it's, all, excuse me, it's also very important to report the execution time. Because, yeah. for, for example, random forest, can, can you show the, the the previous, the last, and the previous one? Uh, this, this one? This okay. one. Uh, in many contexts, uh, random forests have, has shown that this outperforms um, other algorithms. Yeah. I mean, this graph is is very known from other research areas, not only for your data. In general, in general. So, uh, and well, this is another success for the random forest. But it's also known that it's not uh, the fast algorithm. Could you yeah. tell something about? Yes, uh, the, the information about that, the execution time is not reported, but I know that, uh, that the task of classification uh, really, really was high. But the important or, or, or the contribution of this paper um, it was focused on the performance of the algorithm in, in terms of accuracy and the execution time, execution time was out of the scope of the paper was but uh, also is noticeable to detect that because uh, it's important because in different contexts the execution time is a is a high or is a very priority driver and maybe can can make that the regression tree will not be acceptable because it's, it's very slow uh, and uh, uh, we also, yeah, as a future war or in future experiment, we'll report the execution time along with the accuracy task. Okay, yes, uh, I understand. However, um, I think 
of course you, you say the main goal is the to enhance the classifications yeah right? because it's the it's the, the main goal the layout analysis and uh, is the precision in terms of detection and object from a text of a noise uh this is the the main idea of the paper in order to detect that uh regardless the time but maybe the time the execution time could be an important driver or an important decision uh, and it's important to to report again okay uh, karen flores what's the vision sensor that are using for scanning Yes, it's a, sorry, I go back to, to show the, the brand of the device that is Nikon, Nikon no, Nipponic, this is the, the brand of the, the device, it's uh, very practical, uh, it's very cheap and was bought in 2017 in Brazil and, and was very, very important to to accelerate the, the research and the scanning of people and, and the scanning of pages. The task was very hard because there are a lot of information in uh, there are a lot of of, of diary uh, of sorry a lot of copies of this kind of material. So the whole process took two years to digitize all the information present in the in the library. Okay. Very very uh, interesting. And this process was carried out by the student with different scholarships, and and the students were in charge or in charge of the scanning uh, and digitizing the the information. So it was a, a, a educational um, project and was um, coordinated by Fabio Gomez Rocha. Okay. If there are no more questions, I, I think it's very interesting. Uh, in particular, when the approach that you need to touch the the paper, the source, no? for example, yeah. with, with another scanner in, in the, the cell phone. Yeah. For, no? You can yes. use your smartphone, but this is uh, obviously is a better device, but it requires to to get contact with the source yes yes and it's not a problem um yeah you can say that the student that have the protection in their hands and also it's not a picture but the student also has a mask in the in the mouth in order to protect because of the this information could be so old and the the page can contain different kind of microorganisms that could affect the health of the people so uh is um the students were taking or oh, took into account different uh, health measures in order to protect with the contact of the paper yes well Glo gloves and masks are were mandatory okay okay well Thank you. I will show my screen. Okay. I am going to stop. Yes. The Mexican Society for Artificial Intelligence, SMIA, and the Universidad Panamericana award this certificate to Fabio Rocha and Guillermo Rodriguez for presentation of the paper entitled SPA Edu, a toolbox for processing digitalized historical documents at the 19 Mexican International Conference on Artificial Intelligence, MICAI 2020, Mexico City, Mexico. Thank, thank you, you very much. Board. Thank you very much for your attention and thank you very much for the organization in this pandemic context. And, and thank you for allowing allow us to, to participate in that uh, relevant and important event. Um, from Argentina. Yes, from Argentina. Well, thank you. Muchas gracias. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Um, the next presentation is comparative methodologies for evaluation of ontology design. Author Rafaela Blanca Silva Lopez and Iris Idalí Mendez and Hugo Pablo Leiva.
I am sorry, but... Uh, uh, excuse, uh, me, excuse me, yes. excuse me. <laughs> I moved the... I moved the... I changed my screen. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Road sign segmentation through mobile laser scanner and imaginary. Karen? Yes, I am. <laughs> Jose Gonzalez, Pedro Alfonso, Francisco Javier, and Juan Bautista. <laughs> Excuse me. Well. Please, can you reproduce my video? Because my internet isn't good. Please. Okay, your video. Yes. Let yes. me give, it, give me a few seconds. Thank you. Just a few seconds. Which one, which one, which one? Share the video screen, this one, okay. Is it right? Yes, it, it is. Yes, it is, very good. I can hear the audio. You can hear the audio? Yes, give me, give me a second. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me. My name is Karen Flores, and I am a PhD student at Chicata IPN Querétaro. Today, I am sharing my work about right sign segmentation through mobile laser scanner and imagery. I will introduce my work by giving a bit of context, the problems to be solved, and the challenge they face. I will explain the tools to solve our goals, present our preliminary results, conclusions, and future work. In this work, we focus our research on urban applications, taking as a premise that the city's growth is exponential, which requires essential change in its concept, production, and management. Fortunately, technology also continues to improve to being able to face new challenges. As an example, smart cities. Smart cities are the response to address growing urbanization challenge and to promote sustainable development practices. Society must therefore equip itself with new instruments to try to dominate this human revolution. Public and private organisms who regulate, inspect, and monitor public services have adopted technological tools to cover a specific tasks. In Mexico, the National Institute of Statistics and Geography in Eji uses human digitization tools for the construction of maps as support for, com for comparison for projects related to territory, roads, or resources. Our goal is to look for solutions in another human applications as tools made by the Communication and Transportation Secretary. We want to improve the way in which it is carried out the inventory and maintenance of road signs, because this kind of task face many difficulties, like traffic, the weather, the human resources insecurity, or the age of some road signs. And we propose to use a laser scanner and panoramic cameras to get special and visual information from those signs. Well, surely, most of us have heard about archaeological discoveries thanks to the aerial laser scanner. The scans were made using LIDAR systems. LIDAR can be helpful for a wide variety of applications, 
in archaeology for exploring the forest and ancient cities through the reconstruction for video and video game development industries such as topology and historic preservation using formation for evaluating buildings and streets and in urban management the data can be useful for benefit communities but what is a leader leader is an acronym for lightning detection and ranging or laser imaging detection and ranging the working principle of the leader system is quite simple it generates a laser pulse strain which it sends to the surface objects or any digits to measure the time that it takes to return to its source. The actual time calculation is by taking the speed of light as a constant and the result is divided by, by two. In addition to leader, the use of cameras provide visual information such as color and texture, like dimensions using stereo vision. Stereo vision refers to 3D data extraction from digital images, applying an arrangement of two cameras. The first step is calibration or preprocessing using a grid or checkboard pattern with known dimensions. Then the image dimensions are defined by means of a coordinate transformation thanks to the, to the checkboard pattern and its correspondence to the pixels. Now in the optical center of the camera, the information of a scene is compared from two points of view, taking into account the related position of the objects. Mobile laser scanning is carried out by installing a leader device on a vehicle. This device is in constant rotation sending laser beams and obtaining information for their return. This leader has an acquisition distance of approximately three to 120 meters and an age of two meters. If the cameras are installed with the same field of view as the leader, it is possible to acquire images at the same time and obtain color and texture information from the environment. Here in Cicada, we have a multi-tensor system equipped with a 64 laser leader velodyne, a multi-camera system, and a GPS mounted on a vehicle to acquire data from the human environment. The multi-sensor system is powered by the vehicle's battery. Information on the environment, mainly human, can be acquired through a lab. Here, each rotation of the leader is a point cloud of up to 1 million points. If the cameras are synchronized with the leader, the images can be acquired at the start of a turn. Science detection is not a new problem. Autonomous vehicles need to detect signs for rat safety and assistance. Also, there are works to inspect the position and placement of these road signs or for mass reading. More of them using the retroreflective of the signs for detection and as a classification, the deep learning with convolutional neural networks. We want to improve about getting science damage information and more precise annotation to inventory and classification. So we designed a system for extracting both visual and spatial features. The system extracts spatial features as intensity, dimension, position, and orientation from the 3D point clouds acquired by the LiDAR system. Images are obtained from the cameras, and the system extracts features such as color to the shape and textures, or semantic information like lines, letters, numbers, and drawing on these road signs. With these features, the different road signs can be described for later classification. The special information segmentation consists of, of planes extraction, such as buildings and ground, and the road signs to be detected are low and are on the sidewalks or near to the roads. Then, we use a segmentation of individual objects through a maximum density module. Next, 
an intensity filter to verify the retroreflective of the material. Last, an extraction of the form by geometric correspondence. From this process, we obtain the dimensions, position, and orientation of the rod signs found in the fan club. In the building extraction, first we delimit the workspace that it covers the field of vision of the vehicle when driving. Then the system only stores those points that are in front of the vehicle rather than zero in, a, in, in X axis. And within an average width of the rod in Y axis to extract the ground, the system search for the lowest point P and filter the points until getting the point, the, the lowest point to be stored. With of the ground and wheels in the 3D point club, all the remaining rod elements have to be segmented separately. We use a density model segmentation that refers to accumulation of points. These are detected using the Euclidean distance, where those closest points will be stored together, as in these pictures. Next to object segmentation, the systems apply an intensity filter to verify if it is a rod sign. The rod sign painting is a reflective material that allows the light of the vehicles to be reflected without a problem. The intensity value range from zero to one. The points in red in this picture are the most intense. These are the rod sign. And the points in blue are near or closer to zero. The material is not retroreflective. After rod sign intensity verification, the system extracts the shape by, by performing a, a geometric correspondence and approximation function. But before, singular value decomposition obtains the orthogonal vector matrix and uses it as a transformation matrix for reprojecting all the points in a plane. Then, the 3D shape extraction is like in 2D shape extraction in the visual filter process that I will be explained later. The visual feature segmentation process consists of a border and interior color extraction, to the shape extraction by approximation of contours, and extraction of semantic information by feature detection using a cassette descriptor. Then the process allows to obtain color to the shape and semantic information. From the road time, the system looks for the border colors and the interior colors by a color analysis by within the HSD model. Since different, since different factors interfere with the actual color, colors like white, like this in the road time, can have gray or blue values too. And the HSD model allows you to create range of tones considering lighting and or, or opacity. Into the shape extraction, the detection starts in border color of the raw signs. Then a morphological transformation process completes a contour extraction. Once the system extracts the contour, a geometric shape association compares against simple geometric shapes, such as circles, square, triangles, rectangles, etc. After contour extraction, the system performs an invariant feature extraction of the rod sign, such as corners, curves, and edge of numbers, letters, and drawings using the AKC descriptor. AKC is like C, surf, or earth, but better. For preliminary experiments and comparison, we select the Kitty dataset, which is for Germany, consisting of 7,000 images for training, 7,000 images for testing, and the corresponding point clouds. The dataset was acquired in Germany, so the traffic signs and signals are from there. A point cloud looks like this, 360 degrees of points, more than 1 billion points, 
and the images are as this, one of the right camera and one of the left camera for stereo vision purpose. As we can see, the image is only from the front of the vehicle, so we can delimit the space of work in the point cloud only for those in front of the vehicle. Then, from the vast number of images in the dataset, we identify only 10 signs more repeated. These are six giving order signs and four information signs. Special and visual information from the description of the road signs. Special and visual information forms the description of the sign, and we can classify them considering the results. We have the shapes, the dimensions, the border colors, the inside colors, and some semantic information from these 10 road signs. With this small experimental group, we carried out some extraction tests. We present detection results by vector approximation. The 10 road signs using, the, using 20 data, 20 data for learning and 20 data for testing. And we evaluate by true positive and false positive counts the learning and the testing to obtain a precision evaluation. Our precision evaluation is about 88%. And well, it is still necessary to improve our border color extraction and some for some of the road signs, and some colors are confused with other elements or other colors have not been considered. Like in this, the green color is confused with the trees, and here the white color can be confused with buildings or part of the sky. We built an experimental group to demonstrate adequate visual and spatial segmentation. We identified 10 low-rise road signs, each with 20 training data, point cloud and images, and 20 test data. We evaluate the precision of segmentation by counting true positive and false positive. We obtain a precision of 88% and identify possible segmentation errors. We know that on long slopes, our ground extraction method will have a significant error, but it is relevant in order to reduce the 3D point cloud. We know that other researchers use retroreflective filters at first. However, there is a possibility that some signs have warm material, and we want to know that. Also, morphological transformation does not guarantee obtaining adequate contours for different reasons. It is common for color extraction to lose data due to lighting condition or possible nervy objects with similar colors. Some border colors are easily confused with tree, buildings, and sky. We know that our experimental group is small, but it is because Kitty dataset does not have enough traffic signs. They focus on vehicle, pedestrian, and bicycle detection. Vehicles, pedestrian, and bicycle detection are in the lowest edge. The road signs are highest. So for traffic signs, it is necessary to place the leader high enough. Also, the closer road signs have a more significant number of points and better days. So we recommend a minimum of 500 points per sign for road signs inventory and maintenance purpose. As future work, we are going to expand the data set and conduct experiments for at least 25 road signs, increase the experimental group, image and point clouds to 100 for road signs. And we are going to use deep learning for classification. Uh, also, we are going to acquire our data set for road sign detection following our recommendation. We are going to merge the visual and spatial data through the GPS data and extrinsic parameters between, between the leader and the camera. And more important, we are going to construct feature vector for description and annotation. The feature vectors will be a scoring system to measure the traffic signs damage or condition. Well, thank you.
This is all from my part. Thank you for listening. Bye bye. There are some questions. And thank you. Thank you, Karen. We are back. Thank you. Could you, could you comment something else? I'm, I'm sorry, I can hear the question. Could you comment something else about your video? No? Well, only that it is a work in process and we know that we have a lot of work to do. Let me see if there are questions on the social networks. No, uh, on the social networks, I uh, have no questions yet. Okay, neither YouTube, any chance? No, no, neither YouTube. No, uh, I'm here in the room. Remember that your feedback is very important. I can see a lot of work. Um, <laughs> uh, why did you use 2020-50-50% uh, uh, from the, your data for training and test? Because the data set um, it don't have enough uh, traffic signs and that was the, the more of the, the road signs that we find. Did you consider cross-folding? Cross folding. Cross, cross folding. Uh, mm -hmm. You split the the set, your data set, in a number of of folds. Or a split, for example, ten, and then you use the first one with the rest nine, and the second one with the first and the three, four, five to nine, and so on. Uh, ah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, yes, and this is cross folding. Aha. Yes, and. Yes, and we uh, also for the for obtaining the 100 more, we are going to uh, rotate the images and and we are going to to um, data augmentation. Yes, data augmentation yeah, because uh, for for do more experiments. Yes, I yes. think it's very yes. interesting, and the laser is not of course is not able to get the the color information really yes it's only uh, intensity um, intensity of the material oh um, the, uh, the distance yes oh. this distance well the position relative to the to the sensor and when <coughs> it is moving <coughs> and the Intensity of the material is a good information for rat signs that the material of rat signs are is retroreflective for uh, as for vehicle when driving. Uh, at night, the the light of the vehicles reflect the in the rat signs to to visualize it. So the retroreflective of the of the laser is is help, helpful for that. But, but we Ask. we don't have the color. The color is from the cameras. Okay. Very interesting. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, I will share my screen to display your diploma. The Mexican Society for Artificial Intelligence award this certificate and the Universidad Panamericana award this certificate to Karen Lisbeth Flores Rodriguez, Jose Joel Gonzalez Barbosa, Pedro Alfonso Ramirez Pedraza, Francisco Javier Ornella Rodriguez, and Juan Bautista Ornado Ramos for, for presentation of the paper entitled Rod Sign Segmentation Through Mobile Laser Scanner and Imaginary at the 19 Mexican International Conference on Artificial Intelligence, MECAI 2020 in Mexico City. Mexico. Thank you, Karen, and congratulations. Thank again. you. We are a big team, <laughs> too.
Yes, well, because there are a lot of work. <laughs> yes, thank you, bye. Bye. The last presentation is personal authentic person authentication based on the standard deviation of EEG signals and Bayesian classifiers. Authors, Diego Farias Castro and Rocio Salazar Varas. This is the right room, <laughs> session room. Are you there? Yes, we are here. And uh, I guess my screen is shared. I don't know if you are seeing my screen. Yes. Okay. Well, um, I am Rocio Salazar, and I will present the uh, the paper titled as personal authentication based on the standard deviation of EEG signal, signals and Bayesian classifier. Well, uh, Diego is the student who participates in this project. And uh, now I will start. Uh, first of all, I want to say that the authentication is the process in which we identify if, in, if an individual is who it claims to be. This authentication can be uh, uh, can be carried out by, or can be done by possession of a, a key. For example, when we have a physical key, we can access to a, a selected uh, information. Or uh, also, it can be done by knowledge. For, for example, when we have a password, we can introduce our password and we, can, we have access uh, access to the selected information and other way is by biometrics for example using your fingerprints or your gait patterns or among other things uh, in this case in this proposal we want to use and evaluate the EEG signals as a biometric way to authenticate the person uh, based on the fact that the EEG signal or the brain activity is uh, unique for each person. Um, the problem using the EEG signal is that this uh, is uh, non-stationary, so we have some problems with this, but uh, there are different techniques that could be used in order to uh, face this problem. Well, uh, based on this uh, description of authentication, I can say that the authentication problem can be seen as classification problem. In, as you know, uh, given M classes and the official vector X, the objective is to find in which class this uh, vector X can be assigned. Um, in this case, we want to use the Bayesian classifier in which, as you know, uh, the, um, this, this classifier is based on the probability uh, in the conditional probability. So uh, we can compute the conditional probability of the class I given a vector, a feature vector X with this uh, equation. We need the conditional probability of the vector X given the class I. Also, we have the probability of the class I and the probability of the vector. Uh, the rule for the decision is this. The official vector will be assigned to the class I in the case that the uh, probability the conditional probability of the class I is bigger than the other classes. If we have only two classes, uh, we assign the facial vector to class I if the probability of class I is bigger than the probability of class J. In the other case, the vector will be assigned to the other class. Based on this uh, theory, we propose the methodology to authenticate a person 
uh, as this scheme. We propose this methodology composed by two stages. In the first stage, we perform the uh, frequency band selection. I mean, we select the best or the most suitable frequencies in order to uh, detect the, the person. And the other stage is the authentication stage. So I will explain this uh, stage in more detail in this uh, slide. Well, firstly, uh, the first stage is, as I said, the frequency band selection. So we propose to apply a other word filter of fourth order between different put of frequencies. Um, we, uh, we take or we give different values of the, we give different values for low cutoff frequency and high cutoff frequency. And in the different uh, range, we compute the feature vectors for each um, band band pass. So we build the feature rare vector computing the standard deviation for each channel of the EEG signal. Uh, once we have the feature vector, we remove the outliers and uh, we, we proceed to the uh, to the classification. In this first stage, we uh, construct different classes. Uh, the first one is for one subject and the other one is for the other subject. I mean, in this first stage, we perform um, uh, subject identification, but subject versus subject. In this sense, if we have, for example, 10 subjects, we construct of all the combinations among, uh, between these subjects. And we uh, perform the classification using different uh, mental tasks. Uh, and for example, uh, we can have the subject one performing uh, uh, maybe the or imagining the right movement, and also the subject two is imagining this movement. With this uh, mental task, we use to uh, differentiate this, these subjects. We use, as I said at the beginning, the bias classifier, and we tried this. A classifier using the 50% of the available data for each subject. In this uh, stage, we give, as I said, different values for lower frequency cutoff and for the high cutoff, uh, high cutoff frequency. And uh, we select the best combination the best uh, frequency values for each combination how we select these frequencies well we select the cut of frequencies that give us the better accuracy for the identification of one subject and as i said we use different uh, mental tasks in each classification well uh, then once we perform of all the classifications and between subjects, we construct these histograms in which we um, mark as appearance a frequency in the range in the range selected. I mean, for example, if we if if for the first combination of subject one versus subject two, uh, the best bandpass is marked by these uh, cutoff frequencies. Each frequency in this range is marked with an appearance. And this, uh, this appearance is uh, marked for all the subjects. 
So at the end of the experiment, we have a uh, histogram in which all the uh, frequencies that appear in the uh, selected bands are, are indicated in this histogram. And then we select the, ra the range in which we have the most uh, number of appearances. Then in the second phase, which is the authentication, we use the selected uh, frequency, the selected cutoff cut frequencies <clears throat> to perform the authentication. So uh, knowing the best cutoff frequencies, uh, we recompute the uh, feature vectors, but now in this uh, selected cutoff frequencies. So if we compute or if we select n, n, n frequency bands and we have m electrodes, our feature vector will have n times m elements. Then uh, we build a generic class in this way, using all the information of all the subjects except the information of the subject that we want to authenticate. So the two classes that we consider uh, are, as I said, the generic class, which contains information of all of the subjects, and the other class is the class of the subject that we want to authenticate. Uh, to train the classifier, we use 50% of the data, uh, of the available data for each class. And we have different situations. First, if the subject that we, that wants to be authenticated is authenticated as the subject, we have a true asset. Then, if the subject that, one, that wants to be authenticated is not authenticated, we have a false reject. And also, we have that if one subject, which is not the real subject, is authenticated as the subject, we have a false, reject, false accept. And finally, if the subject is, which is not the subject that must be authenticated is not authenticated, I mean, is assigned to the generic class, this is a true reject. Um, with these four uh, situations, we can compute this uh, matrix, the false acceptance rate, the false rejection rate, total error rate and total success rate. And in this sense, and uh, under these conditions, I will, uh, will, I will show you the results. Uh, to evaluate our proposal, uh, our uh, proposal, we use the data set to be from uh, VCI competition form in which uh, we have two different meta mental tasks, which are uh, the motor imagery from right and uh, left hand. We have nine subjects and the recording was performed using three channels. Uh, we have different number of repetitions for each subject, which is uh, from 142, to 201. Under, uh, well, using the uh, methodology that I explained, we obtained this uh, level of accuracy for the first stage in which we perform the classification subject versus subject. So as we can see, uh, we have an accuracy bigger than 
80% in all of the cases, and in most of the cases, the accuracy is bigger than 95%. This table, the left table, is for left movement, and uh, the right table, table is using the right movement. So, uh, so far we can say that using the standard deviation and the Bayesian classifier, we can uh, differentiate between two subjects. Um, <clears throat> these are the selected cutoff frequencies for each combination of subjects. And as I said, using these uh, frequencies, we construct these uh, histograms. As I said before, uh, we mark as appearance each frequency in the range selected for each combination. So um, taking the, the frequency the frequencies that, that have the most appearances, we uh, have the selected uh, bands, uh, which are these that I showed in this, uh, in this table. Then the new feature vector is constructed using these frequency bands. And the results for the stage of uh, authentication are these. Uh, uh, I want that you see the four columns, which contain the total success rate. And as you can see, the total success rate is bigger than um, that 80 uh, for most well, for all the subjects, and for most of the subjects, is uh, bigger than the 95. Um, based on these results, we can say that we have proposed a methodology based on two stages. The first stage is the frequency band selection, and the second stage is the authentication. In the selection, we could, we could select the most suitable band for each uh, combination of subjects. And these selected bands were used in the authentication stage. As I said, the authentication stage uh, was, was performed using two classes, which are the generic class and the client class. And finally, it's uh, remarkable to say that using only three electrodes, the true success rate was bigger than 95 in most of the cases. Other important thing is that the false rejection, re rejection rate and false acceptation rate are low. And these results uh, allow us to think that this methodology is feasible to apply in the in a real situation. Obviously, we have uh, a lot of work to to do, and in the future work, we want to consider these uh, these points. First, uh, we want to evaluate different features. Also, we want to evaluate the use of a generic class and construct a metric in order to use only the information of the subject that we want to identify. And finally, since that the EEG signals uh, are non-stationary, we want to evaluate the methodology using recordings from different days. And this is all. Thank you for your attention. And that's all. Thank you, Rocio. We, uh, congratulations. We have several questions because of the, the importance of your topic. The first is Felipe Arias. How sensitive is this method to the emotional situation of the subject? 
so happy, sad, angry, scared, relaxed. And the other factors like alcohol, drugs, and mental eye lines like Alzheimer. Uh, has this been evaluated? No, no. In fact, it's other things that uh, we want to evaluate because as uh, is known, the EEG signal is uh, highly affected by these situations. So it's necessary to evaluate if the standard deviation, obviously, is a simple, simple uh, feature, which was Mm, useful in this work, but I don't know if will be robust in the case of different emotions, different uh, level of of concentration. I don't know. We need to evaluate that. And there are other questions, Miguel Jara. Thank you for this interesting presentation. Are there any EEG devices that could be used in the everyday life, for example, to authenticate smartphone users? Well, the idea uh, is uh, to use only two or three electrodes. Um, I have seen some devices that record the EEG signal in an easy way. But it's necessary to know the position of the electrode. Well, it's necessary to know the best position of the electrode in order to obtain the best uh, signal. But so far, I, uh, as I said, I know some devices that record the e signal in a... Uh, in a quotidian day, but I don't know if 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 only with one electrode it will be possible. But uh, how do you control that different users have the same scenario, which is very is related with the first question from Felipe? Yeah, it will another uh, point to consider. The, the goal is that we obtain a feature that gives us the information related, related only with the mental task. I mean that uh, it's necessary to find the feature that will not be affected by the scenario, by the motions. Uh, but is future work. Well, I think it's a very important challenge. Yeah, yeah, it's right. Well, is there any question from social networks? No, we have no question for social networks no and or YouTube either. Thank you. Well, I will share my screen. Thank you, Rocio. Thank you. The Mexican Society for Artificial Intelligence, SMIA, and the Universidad Panamericana award this certificate to Diego Farias Castro and Rocio Salazar Varas for a presentation of the paper entitled Person Authentication Based on Standard Deviation of EEG Signals and Bayesian classifier at the 19th Mexican International Conference on Artificial Intelligence, MICAI 2020, Mexico City, Mexico. Thank you. And thank you, Rocio, and thank you, everyone. This was the last presentation of this track session. And you're invited to, to meet us on other rooms or other activities please check your the schedule in the author zone in the um, Eventia platform, please. And I don't know if you have any comment, question. What do you think? Is it important, your comments? 
No. Well, if if you have no more questions, I want to thank again to all of you because of your very important work and presentations. Thank you very much. See you later. Okay. Bye.